Now let's go just a little bit deeper into this now, this uh, irreducible complexity concept that's used by intelligent design to say, well, if it's just this complicated, then there has to be a designer. It absolutely has to be. So irreducible complexity is an argument by proponents of intelligent design that certain biological systems are too complex to have evolved from simpler or less complete predecessors through natural selection acting upon a series of advantageous naturally occurring chance mutations. Now the argument is central to intelligent design and is rejected by the scientific community at large, which overwhelmingly regards intelligent design as pseudoscience. Irreducible complexity is one of two main arguments used by intelligent design proponents, the other being specified complexity. So there's actually there's two different kinds of of arguments here. Um, the irreducible complexity is the most interesting one, I think. Biochemistry professor Michael Behe, the originator of the term irreducible complexity, defines an irreducible complex system as one composed by well-matched interacting parts that contribute to the basic function wherein the removal of any one of the parts causes the system to effectively cease functioning. Evolutionary biologists have demonstrated how such systems could have evolved and describe Behe's claim as an argument from incredulity. In the 2005 Kitzmiller versus Dover Area School District trial, Behe gave testimony on the subject of irreducible complexity. The court found that Professor Behe's claim for irreducible complexity has been refuted in peer-reviewed research papers and has been rejected by the scientific community at large. So th this Dover trial is kind of interesting. I think there's a there's a Nova TV series that I still need to watch on the Dover. If you get a chance to look it up, it's uh, YouTube and look up Dover trial 2005 and it's like a two-hour Nova special on on the kinds of minds that get together and try to prove. And, and it, when you, you see the two different types of people, you can pretty much see it um, that the people that want to believe this are trying to force their opinion on other people. It's it's not it, it's really not uh, it, it's not a m matter of truth. It's a matter of power and forcing. And when it really comes down to it, it's forcing my opinion on yours. Um, and the scientists are saying, hey, you know, let's just find the answer. There are mostly of the religious sort trying to pound their opinion on other people. That's the unfortunate truth when you look at it. So that's how religion is dangerous, is that certain people will interpret and go way overboard. Because it's not rational. It's just not. It's not rational. So that's what. That's what's a little scary about it. Um, it's just not a, not a rational thing. So, um, anyway, check out the Nova special. Um, that's important. Um, I think to watch. Um, there are several definitions or sub definitions of irreducible complexity. A single system which is composed of several interacting parts that contribute to the basic function where the removal of any of the parts causes the system to effectively cease functioning. That's from Michael Behe's uh, Darwin's Black Box book, which I think, I think I have that book somewhere that my friend Craig from Milwaukee, who's very conservative, gave me. Um, Craig's a very interesting guy because you know, he's very compassionate, he's a great family man, but his beliefs are totally wrong, you know, in my opinion. Again, I civilly enter into this thing with him saying, um, you know, that, you know, we need to talk civilly about this, but, uh, you know, he wants to use the, this argument that, okay, if there's, if there's a tractor in a barn for a hundred years, is that tractor going to change? Um, is sort of his cynical way of looking at natural selection. Well, you know, that, 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 that he was pointing out, I guess, two things, is that things won't change over time, and if something like a tractor is not alive, it's not going to become alive over a hundred years, so that's really a failure to appreciate the amount of time necessary, billions and billions of years. The human mind cannot fathom that. The billions and billions of years of evolution 
um, you know, the, the attractor molecules are going to possibly be uh, somewhere else and maybe in a form of life. You don't know. So anyway, so that there it is. Um, intelligent design advocate William Dembski gives this definition. A system performing a, a given basic function is irreducibly complex if it includes a well set, a set of well-matched, mutually interacting, non-arbitrarily individualized parts such as each part in the set is indispensable to maintaining the system's basic and therefore original function. The set of these indispensable parts is known as the irreducible core of the system. The definition ignores the utility of individual components in unrelated systems. The argument from irreducible complexity is a descendant of the theological argument for God. We talked about the William Paley comments already. Um, in the 19th century, uh, Paley's natural theology discusses at length what he called relations of parts of living things as an indication as evidence of design. The fact that living parts go together means there must be a designer. The complexity of the human eye, I think. Um, and we'll get to that a little bit later, but uh, very interesting. In the 1790 book, The Critique of Judgment, Kant is said to argue we cannot conceive how a whole that comes into being only gradually from its parts can nevertheless be the cause of properties of those parts. 19th century um, Georges Cuvier applied uh, the principle of the correlation of parts to describe an animal from fragmentary remains. For Cuvier, it was related to another principle of his, the conditions of existence, which excluded the possibility of transmutation of species. In the late 19th century, in a dispute between supporters of the adequacy of natural selection and those who held for inheritance of acquired characters, one of the arguments made repeatedly by Herbert Spencer and followed by others depended on what Spencer referred to as co-adaptation of cooperative parts, as in we come now to Professor Weissman's endeavor to disprove my second thesis that it is impossible to explain by natural selection alone the co-adaptation of cooperative parts. It is 30 years since this was set forth in the principles of biology. The history of this concept in, in the dispute has been uh, simultaneously enlarged. It is out of the question to suppose that they can all have spontaneously varied in required proportions. The history of this concept in the dispute has been characterized. An older and more religious tradition of idealist thinkers were committed to the explanation of complex adaptive contrivances by intelligent design. Another line of thinkers unified by the recurrent publications of Herbert Spencer also saw co they saw co-adaptation as composed irreducibly whole, but sought to explain it by the inheritance of acquired characteristics. So we go on, we look at the history um, of this idea. Michael Behe developed his ideas on the concept around 1992 in the early days of the wedge movement. The first presented his ideas about irreduci irreducible complexity in 1993 when the Johnson Behe cadre of scholars, a scholar, I guess you could call Behe a scholar, he set out his ideas in the second edition of Pandas and People, published in 1993 extensively, revising the chapter six biochemical similarities. He first used the term irreducible complexity in his 1996 book, Darwin's Black Box, to refer to certain complex biochemical cellular systems. He posits that evolutionary mechanisms cannot explain the development of such irreducible complex systems. Behe credits philosopher William Paley for the original concept. Um, 2001, Behe wrote, there is an asymmetry between my current definition of irreducible complexity and the task facing natural selection. I hope to repair this defect in work soon. Behe specifically explained that the current definition puts the focus on removing a part from an already functioning system. But the difficult task facing Darwinian evolution, however, would not be to remove parts from sophisticated pre-existing systems. It would bring together components to make a new system in the first place. Behe testified under oath that he did not judge serious enough 
Uh, and Behe additionally testified that the presence of irreducible complexity in organisms would not rule out the involvement of evolutionary mechanisms in the development of organic, organic life. He further testified that he knew of no earlier peer-reviewed articles in science journals discussing the intelligent design of blood clotting cascade, but there were probably a large number of peer-reviewed articles in science journals that demonstrate the blood clotting system is indeed a purposeful arrangement of parts of great complexity and sophistication. The judge ruled that intelligent design is not science and is essentially religious in nature. That's, that's a huge ruling there. That intelligent design is not science, it's essentially religious in nature. According to the theory of evolution, genetic variations occur without specific design or intent. The environment selects the variants that have the highest fitness, which are then passed on to the next generation of organisms. Change occurs by the gradual operation of natural forces over time, perhaps slowly, perhaps more quickly. The process is able to adapt to complex structures from the simple beginnings or convert complex structures from one function to another. Most intelligent design advocates accept that evolution occurs through mutation and natural selection at the micro level, such as changing the relative frequency of various beak lengths in finches, but, can, but assert that it cannot account for irreducible complexity because none of the parts of the irreducible system would be functional or advantageous until the entire system is in place. So that's this. So they say the miracle is still that the systems work together that somehow because the systems have teamwork and they work together that, that there's no way that could happen I guess that's what they're saying I'm not sure Behe's, uh, Michael Behe's original examples of irreducible complex mechanisms included the bacterial flagellum of E. coli the blood clotting cascade and the immune system three things he says these are too complex to be understood so let's just stop thinking about it stop right now it's a creator, and it's a Christian creator, by the way. Uh, Behe argues that organs and biological features, which are irreducibly complex, cannot be wholly explained by current models of evolution. In explicating the definition of irreducible complexity, he notes that an irreducibly complex system cannot be produced directly, that is, by continuously improving the um, initial function, which continues to work by the same mechanism, by slight successive modifi modifications of a precursor system, because any precursor in an irreducibly complex system that is missing a part is by definition non-functional. Irreducible complexity is not an argument that evolution does not occur, but rather an argument that is incomplete. In the last chapter of Darwin's Black Box, Behe goes on to explain his view that irreducible complexity is evidence for intelligent design. That's where he makes that step in the final chapter, apparently. Um, Mainstream, uh, main, mainstream critics, however, argue that irreducible complexity is defined by Behe can be generated by known evolutionary mechanisms. Behe's claim that no scientific literature adequately modeled the origins of biochemical systems through evolutionary mechanisms has been challenged by talk origins. The judge in the Dover trial wrote, by defining irreducible complexity in the way that it has, Professor Behe attempts to exclude the phenomenon of uh, acceptation by definition fiat, ignoring as he does so abundant evidence that refutes his argument. Notably, the, the NAS has rejected uh, Professor Behe's claim for irreduc irreducible complexity. So this term of acceptation is kind of interesting. We'll have to look at that a little later. Um, people point to, that, or pro-design, point to the famous example of the complexity of the human eye due to its many elaborate and interlocking parts seemingly all dependent upon one another. It is frequently excited by ID and creation uh, people as an example for irreducible complexity. Behe used the development of the eye problem as evidence for intelligent design in the book Darwin's Black Box, which he's, I think he's made quite a bit of money on, by the way. Although Behe acknowledged that the evolution of larger anatomical features of the eye have been well explained, he claimed that the complexity of the minute Biological reactions required at a uh, molecular level for light sensitivity still defies any explanation. But just because we can't explain it now doesn't mean it's not true. Though. Um, and we can't explain, even an eye doctor can't explain the complexity of the eye. 
um, the reducibility of irreducible systems. Uh, the um, Wikipedia talks about that as well. And it, of course, these Wikipedia things are just starting points for talking points. And you know, we're not saying that. You know, I'm just quoting a lot of the information out of here. But but these are just starting points for better better discussion. Um, intelligent design proponents attribute to an intelligent designer those biological structures they believe are irreducibly complex and whereof they say a natural explanation is insufficient to account for them. However, critics view irreducible complexity as a special case of the complexity indicates design claim and thus see it as an argument from ignorance, the God of the gaps argument. And yeah, if you look, at, if you um, see some of Richard Dawkins' interviews with the, the creationists, They'll say, well, you got there's a lot of gaps, and until I have all the evidence of all the gaps, I'm not believing one thing. But they fail to understand the basic thinking of science is that until a theory is disproven, it, is there's evidence that's totally contrary to to evolution, then we will accept that. But unless there's evidence to the contrary, you know, um, and even... Um, you know, the most staunch atheist like Dawkins says, if there's evidence that refutes the theory of evolution, that um, if we have evidence, for example, uh, um, skeletal evidence of something just being created and and no other evidence for any other being, then, um, you know, that would be something the scientists would say, wow, this is just created, where did it come from? And then, of course, they'd ask where that comes from and does it refute evolution and you know so what's proof of non-evolution um, the creationists say because there's gaps okay and unless you explain every gap then we I, I'm not convinced uh, Eugenie Scott along with Glenn Branch and other critics have argued that many points raised by ID proponents are arguments from ignorance Bay he has been accused of using an argument by lack of imagination and Behe himself acknowledges that a failure of current science to explain how an irreducibly complex organism did or did not evolve does not automatically prove the impossibility of such an evolution. Irreducible, com irreducible complexity is at its core an argument against evolution. Um, if truly irreducible systems are found, the argument goes that intelligent design must be the correct explanation for their existence. However, this conclusion is based on the assumption that the current evolutionary theory and ID are the only two valid models to explain life. Lawrence Moran writes that by concentrating the attention of the opponent on the stated examples, which are carefully selected to be hard to explain, Behe constructs a straw man. So um, you know, look into the Dover trial. I believe there's a, um, a Nova special on the Dover trial. Uh, but, you know, this whole idea of irreducible complexity that, well, because we can't find the answer, then we have to assume it's a Christian God. It's just it's too much of a leap. And to say that we assume it's a Christian God, what does that say to people of other religions? Okay, you got an ID movement in the United States that assumes, well, because we can't prove evolution, it must be the Christian God. And a scientist in India is going... What the hell are you talking about? So we have problems with irrationality. So we have to just be totally objective in order to get along. That's all. <laughs>